Our first caller is Haley from Michigan. Hi, Haley. How can we help you? Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question and taking time. Uh, I'm currently a professional basketball player. I just graduated from college in 2020, so I haven't had a weight room literally since then. And I was just kind of wondering um, how I should go about my training now that I'm playing overseas. And I'm also now playing in the summer with my team in Detroit. So I basically have to be ready all season to be like in shape and everything. So I'm wondering how to make like proper gains strength wise, agility wise, um, functionality wise, while staying in shape and being able to perform well on the court. Okay. Do you not, you don't have access to a gym? Is that, is that still? I do now, Okay. You do but now. Um, it's just like recently, but I think last summer I didn't. So I was doing a bunch of banded workouts and, all like the hills and sand and like outdoor stuff. But I just recently now have like a normal weight room again. Oh, cool. Well, you know, there's a important part to what you said, which is that you're going to be playing year round. So yeah. it's not like you have a true off season where you're not competing and you could focus more energy towards other attributes with your training because you're consistently competing and playing we need to be very careful with how we approach uh, our training. What you don't want to do is sacrifice your practice and your skills training for strength training. It's not a worthy, yeah. it's not worth the trade. Okay. So, okay. so what I'm going to recommend you do is, is maybe one day a week, maybe max two days a week of strength training at the most, uh, even okay. one day, e <laughs> That's even gonna one, be hard for me. Uh, yeah. well, let me ask you this. How often are you, are you practicing with your team? How often are you guys doing your own workouts? Um, so I, we just finished my season in the States and then I'll be going like next month or the end of August to next month to go overseas. But I was practicing with my team three times a week. And then, uh, most of the time I'll probably do two a days with that to get like some shooting sessions up. And then I'll probably go on my own at least another three times. So I would say like five to six. I'm doing at least basketball. Like yeah. Week. Yeah. Yeah. One, Once a week. One, one day a week. That's one, all. One, yeah. day, <laughs> okay. one, one day a week um, of strength training will be perfect for you. And you can throw in mobility work if you want during. Okay. Your, yeah. I try to do that as much as possible as well, just because I'm really, I'm not flexible. So I try to at least be mobile in what I do. So. Perfect. And now, uh, do you have, do you have maps performance? No, I currently don't have any training guide, which is like kind of where I was looking to go for that too. Cause I have a good, like, I think I have a good baseline strength and understanding of what to do, but I just, in terms of programming, I'm not like, I don't know how to go about that yet. Uh, well, here's what I'll do. I'm going to give you maps performance. And now in maps performance, okay. there's three foundational workouts a week. I don't want you to do three. Okay. I, want, okay. I want you to just do one. So go ahead and look at the workouts. But the mobility stuff she's okay. going to be doing every day. Well, yeah, totally. I'm going to interject here for a second, too. I would think that phase two uh, is something I want you to focus on a little bit more in terms of, uh, you know, multi-planar type of strength training where we're getting okay. a little more unilateral work um, in season, mainly because, you know, I'm trying to, to, to maintain and reinforce that stability around the joint because you're a professional level. It's all mm -hmm. about long, longevity and making sure right. that uh, yeah. we're not putting too much damage around the joint. So yeah, that in combo with the mobility sessions can be perfect. Okay. Now, would you guys, what what time of the day would you guys recommend her doing her mobility training? Do you, you think she should get up and do it first thing? Do you think it should be a, a post workout po or post training when you, when you want her doing mobility? Oh boy. I would, I would think it would be great if you did, yep. you know, 15 Priming minutes Priming in the morning and yep. mobility uh, afterwards. Absolutely. Okay. Exa exactly what I was going to say, you know, do some in the morning, 10, 15 minutes. And then, you know, again, after your training, whenever you're playing, you know, doing your practice or even after your workout. And then, Haley, do you okay. uh, do you follow Paul Fabritz? You know who that is? No, I. Oh, PJ. Yes. Is that? Yes. PJ yes, Performance. Yes. PJ. Yeah. Yeah. P I follow. Yeah. I like stalk him as well. I kind of have all his podcasts and stuff. Yeah. Uh, he's awesome. Paul. Paul's the man. So uh, the content that he puts out. uh not even and even his strength training program stuff that he has to align for athletes like everything he's putting out is fire. So that's a, a great person to uh, to follow okay. and pick up on. But as far as uh, training, like Sal said, one day a week out of the maps performance. Okay. Justin, great recommendation with the the second phase. Stay in that, and then pretty much every day you could be doing the mobility work. So uh, and you can okay. pull you can pull the mobility workouts straight from maps performance. So you can use those to follow along. 
and then uh, okay. and then I definitely would be keep consuming uh, Paul Fabrits. I mean, his his content's yeah. fire. Yeah, that's what I was trying to because I listen to you guys a lot, and the one thing you guys always say is trying to like pull back and not do too much. Hmm. And in college, I definitely did way too much. I was always tired, and I think that's just kind of how college is. But now, as a professional, I'm trying to like unlearn a lot of the training habits that I have because I just don't think they're that necessary, and I can be in shape without killing myself every practice. So I'm trying to like learn that, but I was lifting like four times a week and yeah. trying to do like agility twice a week and then <laughs> basketball every day. And I was, it wasn't working out for me. No. So uh, Haley, you, that's why I wanted to reach out to you guys. Haley, you should feel good right. after each session. So that's how you, that's, yeah, that's right. how you judge it. So if you finish practice or you finish a workout and you're like, man, I am wasted or I, I yeah. can't move <laughs> or I'm really stiff or I'm too sore. You overdid it. You should feel good, especially because you're playing. Uh, year round that so this is right. this is especially important for someone like you you should feel good after each workout. Well, so use that as a gauge you're a pro now i mean at this at this level yeah, yeah. you know uh th that's where the the, men the mentality shifts now for all coaches that are training pros it now becomes about longevity yeah. and taking care of you i mm -hmm. mean you've put a recovery. lot of, that's right recovery right, yep. and 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 making sure that uh, we keep your skills <laughs> where they're at because you got there yeah you obviously <laughs> have got that you wouldn't be where you're at so that's right. the main focus is to take care of your body. Okay. That all makes sense. Yeah, I can do that. All right. Perfect. And we're going to send mass performance over to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. No problem. Thanks for calling awesome. in. Yep. Thanks for answering. Thanks for taking time out of your day and just dope content all the time. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Haley. Yeah. So you still there, there Justin? Yeah. You didn't cut me off. Good. Oh, perfect. You know, um, I'm, I'm so glad we have athletes calling in because uh, it can definitely be confusing because you'll hear, okay, we're doing mm -hmm. all these practices. Oh, no, I also need to focus on agility. Oh, no, I need to also build strength. And what they tend to do is they tend to just add on top of each one. So like, okay, five days a week I'm doing this. Now I'm going to do four days a week of this. And I guess I could do strength training after I do those workouts. And it's just, yeah. it's just well, way too much. And here's the beauty of – this is one of my favorite things about resistance training – you don't have to do it very often to reap a lot of the benefits. You really don't. And if you're an athlete, well, especially an athlete, oh, because yeah. you're not your goal, your desired outcome isn't pack on as much muscle as I can or get as shredded as I can. It's about performance. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it, you, your mindset has to completely shift. Yeah. You know, it's funny how um, it, it still blows my mind that as far as we are with with science and training and nutrition and recovery that this is still really, really prevalent in the like college down. You know, it's it seems that it doesn't until you get to that professional level do you start getting like these really high and that there obviously there's exceptions to the rule. Like I know a lot of people who have had had great college coaches and even some people that might have had a great high, but it's more of an anomaly to have this coach or get somebody like a Justin who's helping a high school team out yep. that knows what they're actually doing. Most of these these kids are getting coached by you know, volunteers or people that this is kind of like their side profession, you know, they have like a real job and this is the side thing they do because they have a passion for the sport and they're advising yeah. these kids on, on training protocols. And it's, and you think, and they, everybody, they, they all lean towards the mental toughness part, right? The, the idea of training yep. that hard and that consistent, sure. It has some value as far as mental toughness and, but that's not everything. Like, especially with someone that, that as high, high of a level as she is like, well, yeah, especially at that level. And again, there's there's a dip, massive difference when, you know, you go up in levels from high school to college to the professional level. And so you really have to assess what's going to be best for the athlete. And at that level, it's really just about keeping the body healthy and performing because you're already at the highest, uh, you know, peak of your performance. And we need to just sustain that at that point. Yeah, I, I remember when I figured this out as a trainer, I had a client that was a competitive triathlete and then he wanted to do an Ironman. And the beauty of this was he obviously was very meticulous about his times. So he knew if his performance was improving or if it was declining. And initially when he hired me, we were doing three days a week of strength training. And very shortly he'd come to me and be like, you know, I know this is supposed to help, but my times are getting worse. And eventually we reduced his training down to once a week and the workouts were like 45 minutes. Why? Because he was doing so much other stuff, right? To train for his bike and his swim and his, his run. When we did that, then we saw tremendous improvements. And then I started to really figure it out. Like, oh, okay. We only need to do a little bit to really boost his performance. Any more than that, and it's too much.